Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm so glad that you've decided to join us. And if you've been here for a while, thanks a lot for coming back. My name is Cindy, and I'm with Reinvented Delaware. We love to reinvent and repurpose all sorts of home decor and furniture pieces, and we love to share how to do those projects with you. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to bring a little bit of fall touch to your home by making some pillow covers with fall colors. You're going to love this project. Let's get started. One of the first things that I did was, I bought the celery at the grocery, so we'll snack on the rest of it. And I just cut it off as a bulk. I took my knife and I cut off all of the stalks at once. And then I've set this in water like this. I'm hoping that it will open up a little bit. This has been sitting for an hour and it has opened up just a bit. I have another one here that has not quite opened up as much. And here's why, and I wanna give you this tip before you cut yours. So you'll notice that on this one, I did not cut as wide. I should have made the cut more over in this area of the stalk. This one is a little wider from here to here, and I cut off more of that root end of the celery, and I think that's why it's opened up more. But anyway, lesson learned. I'm going to probably only use this one. We'll give this one a try. Uh, I, I'll still test it and we'll see, but I don't think I'm gonna get clear, the clear look that I'm looking for that I will in that one. So the finished pillow is, we want to be finished at 18 inches. Our pillow form is 20 inches, and remember I said you want your pillow cover to be two inches smaller so that you have a nice firm fit with that pillow. So to get that measurement, you saw that I, I cut off the edge over here. I did try to tear it. Often you can snip it and tear it. This drop cloth did not want to behave in that direction, but you saw that it did rip in this direction. So just grab your scissors and cut out a straight line the best you can. Don't worry about it too much, but a generally straight line to cut off that selvage edge that comes with a drop cloth. And then from that edge, we're going to mark over to the 18 inches that we want it finished, but we need to allow seam allowance. So we're gonna have a half inch seam allowance on each side. So that brings it up to 19 inches wide. So we're going to cut from here to here, 19 inches wide. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'll show you how I do this. I've been doing this for years and it's worked out pretty well. I just make my little cut without marking. And then I'm going to make another cut and I'm lining up this cut edge to the 19 inch mark here. All right, so we have cut our piece by 19 inches across to allow for a half inch seam allowance. If you're more comfortable using a quilter's ruler to mark and measure and cut, and then you also have a straight edge here. So what you can do is line up the straight edge with one edge of your fabric, mark the 19 inches, let's see, here it is, mark the 19 inches, inches move it down a little bit, mark another 19 inches, and so on and so forth, all the way down your fabric. Then you'll have dots where the 19 inches are, are, are all marked, excuse me. You can turn your ruler and use the long edge and draw a straight line matching up all of those 19 inch marks. And then you have a nice straight line to cut. If you're more comfortable doing that, I suggest you do it. I just didn't feel the need to do it for my project. So now what we have is 19 inches across and uh, it's pretty wide this way. I just left myself extra and I will leave complete measurements down below in the description. But now we need to figure out um, what we're going to do about this folded edge. This is how it's going to be at the end. It's going to fold over. It's going to leave an envelope to put the pillow in, but we want to make it easy enough for the pillow to go in without it gaping once the pillow is in there. If the overlap, it's too shallow, it's going to want to gape and you don't want that. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, we're just going to lay this out and kind of see where we are. So I know how how much to cut off before we hem it. So I've got the two pieces overlap. Let's just take a little rough guesstimate of where we are. Right now I'm at about 19 inches. So I know it's gotta come in a little farther. Yep, this is 18 inches this way. Now I'm not measuring 19 inches this way because I don't have a seam allowance. This direction we will have a seam allowance, but we don't on this end because these are folded edges. But I do need to um, take off some of the fabric for the hem. So I'm just gonna roll that out of my way. This is a pretty good amount that I need as an overlap. 
lap. So I know that I can fold this down once and then I can even fold it again to make a nice clean seam hem. I guess this is more of a hem on this side. That's going to be ironed and stitched down here with the sewing machine. And then on this side, I know I have way too much here. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut some of that extra off. I can feel where my other hem is. It's right in here and I want enough overlap. So I think I'll take off, uh, let's say about this much. And like I said, I'll have all the measurements of this pillow cover to fit a 20 inch pillow form, but the pillow cover is going to be 18 by 18. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm gonna double fold, gonna iron it flat and I'm going to stitch it down and then we'll be right back. All right, so I'm over at my ironing board and I've got this piece and I, I know a rough estimate of how much I have to turn down side for the hem. So I know I can turn it this way and I'm gonna turn about a half inch, so a total of an inch. I'll show you how I do a hem. It's, it's kind of an easy way to do it. So I know I'm gonna turn an inch towards this side and then for this one, this will be an inch towards this side. So we'll do this one first. And again, if you wanna measure this, feel free to measure. I'm just gonna do a little rough estimate here. Uh, I love this iron, by the way. This is a Ruinta, and I have had this iron for years and years. It's a workhorse, puts out a lot of steam, and I'm a big steam person. And then what I do, once I have that nice crease in there, I can just take this edge here and the cut edge, I can place right where that crease is that I just stitched. And it gives you a nice clean finish. You can just move right along. I want to mention something before we go on any farther. If you prefer, you could do the stamping of the paint stamping that we're going to do before you stitch the sides. And that way you have a little bit more control about it, not bleeding through the back side. So if you want to do that instead of the way that I'm doing it, what you could do is after you have it all figured out where to make sure that you have 18 inches wide and then on the other side, when you turn it inside out, you could include your design within that 18 inches. You could iron this down, which would give you a seam on both sides. And then you would know when on the other side you know that would be kind of your guideline to not stamp beyond that then you would open this up find the right side and you could do the stamping that way I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way and then I'll put something in between the uh, the layers so that the paint does not bleed through Got my paper bag in the middle and I think the area that um, I want to cover almost the whole pillow pretty big you know I was thinking you could use a dinner plate and trace out a circle really lightly with a pencil and that would help you stay within the lines if you're concerned about that this is a project for me that I just want to enjoy and kind of wing it I just want to see what happens without things being so precise and measured I tend to get caught up with all that anyway got my celery stamp ready I'm gonna get some paint on here to make sure I get enough paint on the whole thing I think we're covered. And as I stamp, I think I will turn the piece of celery around because it's laid out differently all around and I want the variation. Here we go. I'm just gonna start with approximately the center. Oh, I love this. That's just fun. I think that's enough. I want to point out something here. See how it's darker on the outside where I stamped it and lighter on the inside. That's because of the inside hem. Remember for the envelope, it, we did an inside hem in here and it's not going to make the contact. I'm okay with that. If you want to avoid that, you can do this stamping like I mentioned earlier before you stitch it. I want to add just a touch of green to this full big bloom, this big mum bloom. I want to have just little bits of, of green leaves out here just to kind of represent the leaves. 
but let me see what I can come up with. Hindsight is 2020, isn't it? So while I was stamping and having just so much fun, what I didn't think about was the end result of the celery. So the celery is completely red and I still wanna make a pillow cover out of that kernel mustard color, that yellow, which is a lighter color than the red. I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking, I just went for it. Here's my solution. I'll show you more here in a second. But my solution is if you wanna do this, stamp your lighter color first and then stamp your darker color, then you won't, you can avoid my little mishap here. Let me show you what I'm gonna to do to solve my problem. So here's my viewpoint on projects. Like I just really like to try the projects. If you mess up, it's no big deal. Like there's so many things that you can just redo or do over, but if it prevents you from even trying the project in the first place, well, then what's the point? Just jump in there, have fun doing the project. If you run into a little jam, just figure it out. Come up with another solution, get creative. It's interesting because when you have a problem like that, that is what forces your brain to get really creative, at least in my experience. Sorry about that. In my experience, it has really helped me to get creative when I I am limited in supplies or I'm limited in time or I'm limited with <laughs> mishaps like I did this morning. You just get the thing figured it out and come up with another plan. Big change of plans. I had to figure out what to do about the leaves that I wanted to make. So I'll show you what I did there. But first of all, let me tell you, I've changed the color that I'm going to use for the leaves to this color. It's called collard greens. It's a it's a deeper, warmer, richer green than the one that I'd picked out. I think that the, the uh, what color did I pick out? Kudzu. It's more of a spring green and that would look beautiful if these were spring colors but I think because we're going with fall I think that this green is actually closer to the green color of mum leaves so there I have you can see that's a really really nice shade of green and you can even see it with the red how nice that looks looks so good so I'm kind of glad that I had that little um, pause in getting ready remember the piece of celery that I cut and I cut it wrong <laughs> I just took it and I cut it in half. You can see here where I've cut it in half lengthwise, so it's still all connected at the root. And then I used a paring knife, and let's see if you can see that in there. I took a paring knife and dug down in to make more separation between the celery stalk bases that are in here. So it'll hopefully look a little bit more like a, a separated leaves. I don't know, we'll see. All right, I'm going to get some of the green paint on my on my um, stamp here. Now you can really see how different, how different the shape is. You can see that I've dug down. All the spots where there is no paint are the areas that I dug down so that I would have more definition. I hope I'm explaining that well. Dab off a little bit. And then here's another thing that I noticed. Let's show you here. Here's my whole pillow cover from this side to this side. And it, I didn't get it quite centered, but that's okay. I probably have about an inch and a half here, but over here I have a good three inches. So that's all right. I'm just going to put my little bits of green on this side and it will help to balance out. And I might dab some green here and there, but for the most part, I'm going to put the green on that side. So here we go. Perfect, that's just what I want. Look at that. Get a little more. And we'll just go around. I'm gonna turn the celery around so it looks a little different. I'll have some lighter and some darker and that's okay, I like that too. We'll turn that celery around. And this, we're just adding the idea of color to represent this big bloom of chrysanthemums, of mums that are coming this fall. They're gonna be here before you know it. Look, I filled in a little space there, I like that. And then we're gonna put one there and a light one here. You get the light ones by not re-dipping. And I like that. This is holding up really well. Let's see how that looks. It looks really good. It's, um, I'm sitting down as I work on this project. It's a good idea to stand up above it so you can see the whole um, the whole thing. In fact, I'm looking in my camera, the screen on my camera, and I can really see it well. So for you, you might have to just stand up and get a second look before you do the next stamp. Just take a good look at it and kind of see where you think it needs a little bit of green and just add bits of green here and there. This is that area where that seam was, and I'm going to check my fingers for paint so I don't get paint all over the place. And I think I'm gonna to try to move that little seam so I can add some green in there. Let's see if I can do that. Yep, I can reach in there and I can move the seam so it's nice and flat in these areas here. 
And we're just going to um, whoop, make sure I don't get green where I don't want it. Get a little paint, a little paint. And we'll just add some green in there like that. And that'll help to disguise my little mishap. And it'll be as though some of the leaves are just peeking through the blooms. You know, you, you can see that happen on a chrysanthemum. For the most part, it's filled in. Put some more in there. Yep, and then a little bit more right in here. Yeah, I like this a lot. What do you think of it? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know, have you ever tried to stamp fabric like this with a vegetable? If you have, I would love to know about your experiences with it and if you enjoyed it. There we go. Oh, that looks so pretty. That's going to be so pretty. I'm going to set this aside to dry and then I'm going to stamp the yellow one and I'll use the same green for the leaves on the yellow because it goes so well with the yellow. You'll see it, but let me get this in a safe spot to dry and get the other pillow started. I am going to heat set this paint. It's completely dry. In fact, I laid mine out in the sunshine and just let it bake in on both pillow covers. That's what I did. But I, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and heat set it anyway. And I would recommend that if you're going to wash these pillow covers, these are mostly decorative, so it's not like they're gonna get filthy. But if you need to wash them, I would suggest hand washing them very carefully and then letting them air dry and you're gonna be fine. Heat typically sets everything. Like think about a stain. They always say get the stain out before you put it in hot water and before you put it in a hot dryer, that's because it will set the stain for, for most stains.
That was fun, wasn't it? I loved making these pillows. I cannot wait for the Christmas season and I'm going to try to make these in maybe some different colors. And then next spring, oh, I'm so excited for spring and summer to come because these pillows made just with different colors would look just as beautiful and just as seasonal. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and this video. If you did, could you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We would love for you to join us here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. I did that right. Now, last view, whatever. Let's start over. Can you go lay down? Go lay down. Go lay down. That was better. I like that one. Okay, that's the one I'm going to save. And what else? The I don't need to go into detail. Don't go into detail. All right. Okay, let's let's do it again. Let's do it again. Who am I? What what am I doing? Yeah. I I'm, I'm going to say that's enough.